In this video, you will learn how to transform your animation from this to this without using any external plugin. So welcome to the lesson 12 of this After Effects series, where you are going to learn how to use layer styles to add realistic lighting and shading to any 2D layers in After Effects. So without any further delay, let's jump right into it. Here we have a circle shape with white fill and no strokes. Right click on the shape layer and here we have layer styles. And here we have all the options for layer styles. You can either click on it one by one and add each of the effects one by one or click on show all to add all the effects of layer styles together. So we're going to add all the effects together. So click on it. Now inside the shape layer, we have three different categories. Contents, transform and layer style. Under layer styles, we have all the effects for layer styles. Right now, all the effects are deactivated. We can activate it by turning on the I button or turning it off to deactivate the effects. So first, let's check out color overlay. With color overlay, you can add a fill effect on your 2D layer. Next is stroke. With stroke, you can add stroke on your layer. From size, you can change the stroke width. From opacity, you can change the transparency. And in position, you have three different options. Outside keeps the entire stroke outside the shape path. Inside keeps the stroke inside the shape path. And center keeps some of the portion inside and some of the portion of the stroke outside the shape path. Let's deactivate stroke and color overlay for now. And let's check out the gradient overlay. The gradient overlay adds a gradient fill on your 2D layer. From color, you can change the color of the gradient. So let's change the gradient color ranging from yellow to dark red. So you can click on the color stop and then change the color of that portion of the gradient. And you can click anywhere in between to add another color stop. From gradient smoothness, you can change the way the gradients are going to blend. I'm going to keep it 100% for now. From angle, you can change the angle of the gradient. Let's keep it 90 for now. From style, you can change the style of the gradient. Right now we have linear, but we can change it to radial and angle. So with radial, we have a radial gradient. We are already familiar with it. From angle, we are going to get a gradient something like this. Then from reflected, we're going to get a unique style of gradient, something like a metal reflection or something similar. And from diamond, we get another unique style of gradient. But right now, I'm going to keep it linear. From reverse, we can switch the colors. From scale, we can scale up or scale down the range of the gradient colors. And from offset, we can offset the gradient colors in X and Y axis. Next is drop shadow. This adds a shadow effect on the background layer. From color, you can change the color of the shadow to a different color. I'm going to keep it black for now. From opacity, you can decrease or increase the opacity. From angle, you can change the angle of the casted shadow. From distance, you can increase or decrease the distance of the shadow from the shape layer. If you decrease the spread, you are going to add a little feathering on the shadow. And if you increase it, you can increase the hardness of the shadow. So I'm going to keep it somewhere in between. From size, you can either increase or decrease the size of the shadow. And from noise, you can add some noise on the shadow. So let's keep it 4%. Now let's turn off the drop shadow for now. And next is satin. Now this effect adds shadow on the entire fill, giving an illusion like it is blocking the light source. So from here, you can change the blending mode. From here, you can even change the color. And from here, you can increase or decrease the opacity. From angle, you can change the angle of this shadow. From distance, you can increase or decrease the distance. From size, you can increase or decrease the area of the shadow. And if you click on invert, it is exactly going to make the effect opposite. So right now, we have the highlight at the center and shadows at the edges of the shape layer. Now let's turn it off and let's check out outer glow. Inside outer glow, if we increase the size of the glow, we can add glow on the outside border of the shape layer. And you can change the opacity, add some noise or even change the color. And you can even add gradient glow by changing the color type from single color to gradient. Now from edit gradient, you have to change the color. So let's pick the color ranging from yellow to red. So let's 
turn off outer glow for now and let's check out inner glow. With inner glow, we can add glow inside the layer border. From size, we can increase or decrease the size of inner glow. Let's keep it around 75. From chop, you can harden up the edges of the inner glow. Let's keep it around 8%. Let's add some noise of around 3%. Again, from the color type, you can select single color or gradient. I'm going to keep it single color for now. And from the color, let's change the color a bit. Let's add some darker yellow. Okay, next is bevel and emboss. Let's add it. Add inside bevel and emboss. If we increase the size, we can instantly convert a 2D shape layer into a complete 3D sphere. Now, it is still a 2D shape. But with the layer styles, it looks like a 3D shape. Let's keep size around 250. From depth, you can increase or decrease the depth of the effect. And if you increase it too much, you can get some conical shape like this. So I'm going to keep it 100% for now. From the style, you can get different styles for this effect. But I'm going to keep it inner bevel for now. You can change the angle from here. So let's keep it around 100. From here, we can change the highlight color and from here, we can change the shadow color. Let's change the highlight color to some light yellowish color and the shadow color to dark reddish color or maybe something near blue or purple. And now to make the shape look even better, we can apply few effects. So let's start with adding a glow effect. Threshold around 30 and radius 70 and let's increase the intensity to 2. Let's select this effect, press Ctrl plus D. This time, glow threshold 20%, radius 100. And now you have converted the 2D circle shape into a 3D glowing ball. Now here are some more pro tips. To increase the contrast between the shadow region and the highlights, we can add another effect. So let's add an adjustment layer first. So right click. Go to new and adjustment layer. So adjustment layers are used to apply effects. If you apply an effect on any adjustment layer, it's going to apply the effect all the layers below it. So we're going to start with adding a curve. Keep the channel RGB and add a simple S curve. And now the overall scene looks even better. If we turn it off and turn it on, you can see the difference. And then we can add a little noise as well. So type in noise in the effects and control panel and apply this effect and amount of noise 5%. And it adds a noise to the entire scene. And you can use layer styles on any layers in After Effects, exactly the similar way on how we have used it on a shape layer. And here we have a character animation rotating in 360 degrees. So select the composition, right click on it, layer styles, and click on show all to add all the layer styles in the composition. And now you can see we have added some realistic lighting and shading on our character animation by applying inner shadow, bevel and emboss and satin under layer styles. And if you are wondering how I animated this pendulum animation, then here is a quick demonstration. So here we have the ball and the string layer. Let's parent ball with the string. Let's open the rotation property of the string and add a keyframe on rotation. Let's rotate it by 46 degree. Let's jump on to next 35 frame and now rotation minus 46. Again, jump on to next 35 frame and this time rotation back to 46. Select the keyframes. Easy is it. Go to the motion graph editor and add hard ease on all the keyframes. And here we have the pendulum animation. On the background, we have a simple gradient shape layer. Let's open the position and add a keyframe on the position property of the background layer. Now let's jump on to next 35 frame and let's move the background this side. Again, let's jump on to next 35 frame. So we are basically syncing the background with the pendulum animation. So let's copy and paste the initial keyframe. Now I'm going to use a free script called EaseCopy. You can download it from the ascript.com. So I'm going to use this script for copying and pasting the motion graph editor. So let's select these three keyframes and click on copy. And right now the motion graph editor of these three keyframes are copied. Now let's select this three keyframe and click on ease on the paste section. Now if you check out the motion graph editor, it's exactly same as the pendulum motion graph. 
and one final thing let's add a new solid layer let's name it grid and apply grid effect on this solid layer change size from to width slider width around 140 border 3 and opacity around 40 and let's place it above the background layer and let's change the blending mode of this layer to overlay and now if you preview the animation it would look like the background is still but there is some light and shadow movement in the background due to the glowing ball all right so that is it for this video if you like the video then make sure to hit the like button if you have any doubt regarding the techniques then make sure to comment down below i would be happy to help you out and if you are here for the first time then make sure to subscribe the channel and hit the bell notification button to stay notified for all the future updates until then goodbye